This is the uh, Harbor Freight 7x10 mini lathe, uh, which I purchased uh, about a month ago. I've uh, used it a little bit and i uh, pretty happy with it so far. I've uh, had the Harbor Freight mini milling machine for four or five years now with it. Uh, use it quite a bit and I've had no problems, so I wasn't hesitant at all to purchase this machine. Um, I'm doing some research about it. <clears throat> I found some stuff on the web that was pretty helpful, but I uh, couldn't find too much. So I wanted to put this video together and uh, maybe help some people out if they're thinking about buying this machine. I am not a professional machinist at all, just a home hobbyist, and uh, I have a lot to learn myself. But I'll show you what I, I, I've learned so far uh, to get you going with this machine. Uh, this is pretty much how it comes, except the fact that I, I changed the, the, the tool post to a quick uh, quick change tool post holder. Uh, the one that it comes with is, is alright, but uh, it's uh, as soon as your budget allows, for about $100, you can get this tool post holder, which uh, just makes things so much easier, as you'll see, as, as we'll go along. The machine comes with a pretty good three-jaw chuck. Uh, it's got this plastic cover on it. Um, I've seen some people take it off. It acts as a safety mechanism. You've got to have it down for it to be in the uh, uh, power position. Three-jaw chuck is pretty good. I don't see any need to upgrade uh, at this point. Uh, it seems to work pretty well so far. comes with a nice live center. Uh, it's a uh, pretty good quality. Uh, for about 10 bucks, you can buy a drill chuck from Harbor Freight that's compatible with this machine. And one of the operations you do a lot on a lathe is, is drilling, so uh, for about 10 bucks, this drill chuck seems to work pretty well. There, there's some better quality ones out there, but I haven't had any problems with this. Uh, to turn the machine on, uh, your protective cover's got to be down. You've got your main power switch, you can put it in the on position. I'm going to put it in forward. Uh, the machine's got two gears, high and low. Uh, this is from 0 to 2,500 RPMs. In low gear, it's from 0 to 1,100. Uh, I do most of my stuff in low gear. So it's in low gear. Turn on about halfway. It's going to be about 600 RPMs. Mm -hmm. here, it's, it's not that loud. Pretty quiet machine. It's your, uh, your main compound. Main, the main feed of oil. It's got power feed. I don't use it too much. But it's pretty easy to engage. Uh, there's, a, there's a lever on the back to, to keep it on or off. Right now it's on. You engage it. Put this lever down. And you'll see it starts spinning by itself. And to stop it, you got to be careful. You never want to run your, your too close into your truck. Simply lift the lever up. Again, I don't do too much power feed, but it's nice to have that. Do some threading if, you, if this machine can also do that. So, pretty good machine. Okay, well, one of the uh, main things you do on a lathe is, is face off the end of a, a piece of metal. Uh, we're going to be working with a half inch piece of steel. Uh, this is a uh, 12L14 steel. Uh, it's actually very easy steel to machine. Uh, when you get started, you might want to use this or, or aluminum. It's very easy to practice with. Uh, what I did here was I just cut a small piece and I used my metal cutting bandsaw to cut it with. And it looks pretty straight here, but you're never going to get a perfectly straight cut. So you're going to face it off to get a, a perfectly straight uh, end to the shaft here. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. First thing you want to do is chuck it up. Uh, so you got your chuck here. And when, anytime you want to face, you want to keep it close to the chuck. Uh, this is a half inch diameter shaft. You usually want to go maximum about three times that. So that would be about an inch and a half out. Uh, or else if you keep it out like this, it would be unstable. So we're going to chuck that in there. And when you chuck it in there, just do it slowly until you get a little feel so you can turn it. And then try to try to use all three, uh, tighten it from all three positions. That's good standard practice. Okay, you're going to put your guard down here. And you're going to bring your wheel back. And anytime you do a facing operation, uh, you're going to lock your wheel. 
Now we have the power feed off now, so when this is in the locked position, it's not going to feed automatically. And I'm going to bring that in close. And the tool we have here, another thing with with lathe, uh, using lathe is oh is is tool selection. Uh, there's some things you got to learn about tool selection. But this is just a a general tool bit for uh, for facing turning operations. I got to set at the pre proper height here for a facing cut and proper angle. So we're going to turn the machine on. Uh, we're going to keep it on. Every, pretty much everything you do is going to be on forward. Uh, we're going to we're going to face this at about 600 RPMs, and then the finishing cut we're going to crank it up to about 1100 uh, to get a little smoother finish. Again, we're just trying to even out the end, so we're just going to take a little bit off. I just took a tiny bit off, bring it in a little bit more. So now we're taking quite a bit off. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up well. I'm going to speed it up and bring it in just about a 10,000. Chuck. You see here, you got a nice, nice flat finish. Okay, uh, we're gonna make another face cut just to show you that again. But uh, before we get too far, I just wanted to talk a little bit about safety. Um, as far as a, a lathe goes, it, it's definitely not a toy. And uh, one thing you you shouldn't do is wear long sleeves, which I'm doing right now. But it's like 10 degrees outside, and it's like 40 degrees in my basement, so you gotta be careful with that. And always, always wear glasses. Uh, definitely don't work without glasses. Not a smart move. Don't even turn the machine on without glasses. Um, okay, I'm just going to turn the machine back on, make another face cut, and then uh, talk to you a little bit about the tooling. So again, we're going to put the power switch on, forward, and turn it about halfway to about 600 RPMs. Take a little bit more off so you can see it. Bring that back. And when you're making a face cut, you're only bringing it halfway and then bringing it back. Bring it back and I'm going to speed it up. Bring it in about a, just a little bit, about a 10,000. And just shave a tiny bit off to polish it up. Bring it back, push it a tiny bit more, once more, and a nice, smooth, shiny finish. Okay, now you can see here, it's a completely flat cut. There is no knob or nub on the end of the, of the shaft there, and, and that's the importance of the quick change tool post holder. Uh, the one that it comes with, it limits you to using 5 uh tools, which this actually is. This is one of the inexpensive bits that Harbor Freight sells, but it works pretty well. Um, with the quick change tool post holder, you can use anything from a quarter to three eighths, even half inch. So it really gives you so so much more uh, flexibility. Some of the other tool bits you can get have the carbide inserts. Um, this one I, I use for grooving. Get another general one that's for turning. That's pretty similar to this. Uh, it's, it looks different, but it, it serves as the same function. There's a lot of different things you can do. The way you angle your bits. This is a parting tool. Um, depending on what you're doing, you might be doing some parting. You might cut it with a bandsaw and face it off. But ability with a quick change tool.